Anybody else ready for a nap? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to just dive into um, a couple little practical things here. I'm going to be pretty quick on these just so we can get on stage and have some fun. Um, and we'll do uh, a listening exercise in a little bit with House of the Lord, which was one um, that you guys brought. So we'll just listen through that one time and, and just kind of talk through that a little bit. But anyways, just want to talk about some of the practical things as far as, you know, being on a worship team and all that um, and just talk about. Obviously, we, we've talked about the importance of identity and, you know, what it means to be a Christ follower. And what is that? How do we move that into worship team? Um, and one of the things I love to use as far as like a term is when you're on the worship team, like so for my main instrument is drums. You know, I'm not just a drummer. I'm a worship drummer. And, you know, putting that in front of it, a worship leader, a worship guitarist, a worship bassist, a worship sound guy. Um, what like it puts responsibility and um, it put, puts like there's there's a weight that you carry with that. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about what that means. And with that, you know, with being a, um, you know, a worship musician or a worship vocalist, um, the goal as far as being on a team is serving. You're there serving. Um, you're you're a part of the team. You know, Angie and Joel are leading the, you know, the worship and tech. So you are there to serve. And there's four um, four things that I like to focus on when it comes to serving as holistically on a worship team. The first thing is you're serving the Lord. Um, the second thing is you're serving the worship pastor. The third thing is you're serving the congregation and the body of the church. And then four, you're, you're serving the song. And the song will be like all the things we'll get into when we get on stage and the listening exercise. But, um, you know, when you are prepping for a Sunday or a rehearsal, ask yourself, how am I, how am I doing these four things? How, how, am, how am I serving the Lord? How am I serving the worship pastor, the congregation, the song? Um, obviously, serving the Lord is the most important. You know, we spent almost, you know, not almost, we spent all morning talking about that and, you know, keeping our focus on Jesus. Um, so that's the most important thing. Um, no, obviously, nothing else matters. Like, spend time with Jesus, you know, serve, serve the Lord. Um, and we have to be cultivating a relationship with Jesus outside of just Sunday morning. So if all you're doing is doing for the Lord and not being with the Lord, there's, there's something you're missing there. You need both. And, and I've fallen into that before, especially being, you know, on staff at a church, a lot of my, you know, quote unquote relationship with Jesus was me doing and, oh, I'm, well, yeah, I'm spending time in worship, but really I'm listening to songs that I'm prepping for Sunday. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not listening to get into the presence of God. I'm listening for the sake of learning, if, if you will. So there's, there's, there's an extra step, you know, with being on a worship team that you need to be doing. Um, you know, you need to have a lifestyle of worship. And, you know, we tell people what you, uh, what y we won't do in public what we don't do in private. So if you're not spending time with Jesus in private, you're not going to do it in public. Um, and a lot of times, like, we might be so frustrated with, um, oh, the, the congregation's not responding, or th this isn't happening. And sometimes it might just be, it, it might not even be them, but you can't take them to a place you haven't been. So uh, sometimes it actually might just be something that you need to work on. Like, oh, because we were hit with that, you know, when we were on staff, like we kept hitting this wall. It was like, why, is, why are they not responding? Why are they not moving forward? And the Lord was like, yeah, like, I want you to move forward first. Like, I want to take you to a new place before I can take them to a new place. So, um, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, let's move on to, so obviously we could spend all day talking about serving the Lord and all that. Let's move on to what it means to serve the worship pastor. Um, so a couple things that I, I you know, uh, when serving the worship pastor is, like, be cooperative. Uh, work alongside your worship pastors and, and you know, your tech directors or whatever, whatever the titles are. Um, you know, leave, you know, when you show up to a rehearsal, leave your, leave your pride at the door. I, I always say that to teams, just leave your pride at the door and just walk in ready to, yes, okay, this is what we're going to do. Okay. And just, and just run with it. Um, another thing is come to rehearsal prepared. I, I can't stress that enough. Rehearsal isn't your time to learn the song. It's, it's your time to bring all the pieces together. So you should be learning the song before rehearsal and then you, you, 
it's bringing the pieces together and seeing what works, what doesn't work, and adjusting as you guys are running the songs. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, there might be times where you may be frustrated or don't necessarily agree with something the worship pastor is, is doing. Um, but one of the things I like to tell teams is, like, they're, you know, he or she, like Angie and Joel have a job to do, and they're also here to shepherd the, you as the team, but they're, like, there also might be things that, that are coming from the top down that are being asked of them. Um, from Pastor Gary, you know, as, as he's hearing from the Lord, hey, this is what we're supposed to do, and then he's casting vision to his leadership team, and then they're bringing that vision to the team. So just be willing to just flow, and I, I feel like the team does a good job of that. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of sensing that. And then um, one of the things just as, as, as far as a team is, like, debrief after services. Like, talk about what worked. Talk about what didn't work. Um, go listen to the live stream. Like, the live stream is not just a tool for people to do church at home. You know, like, the live stream is an amazing tool that we have right in front of us that literally on your drive home, you can listen back to what, what you just did on, the, on a Sunday morning. That is an amazing tool. And, and you know, I, I know there's people who are like, I don't like to listen to myself. Too bad. Like, do it. And if, if you don't like listening to yourself, Why? You know, use it as a tool. And, you know, I'm, I'm a drummer, so there would be times where, you know, I'll add my own little flair. And there were times that I went back and listened. And there were times I was like, yeah, that, that really was awesome. That fit really great. And then there were times I was like, what in the heck was I doing? Like that fill just ran right over the guitar line. Or that fill, like the vocalists were just like, you know, pressing into Jesus and the spirit was moving. And that was such a distraction. So use it as a tool to grow. Guitar, guitarists, use it as a tool to like, oh, that tone is actually a little harsh. Let me work on my tone at home to, to just work on things. So, yeah, use the live stream. We actually used to make our team listen back to the live stream, and then by Tuesday or Wednesday, they had, a, they had to send us notes on what they heard, good and bad, and then we sent them notes, good and bad. And I don't want to say bad like, oh, my gosh, but, like, but you know, just, hey, like, here's – Here's some things to think about. Like, you're doing great, but yeah, yeah, like maybe work on your tone a little bit. I was just going to add to that. So with the live stream, too, um, if you're on stage, and this doesn't just apply to uh, vocalists and worship leaders, a lot of emphasis is always placed on on um, those um, positions for this, what I'm about to say. But it's for everybody who's on the stage. It's really good to not just listen to the live stream, but also watch, okay? Because... Um, we know that, accord, you know, biblically speaking, it is the spirit that draws people. It is Jesus that draws people, okay? So, you know, what Pastor Joel was praying earlier about, like, don't let us be discouraged by the lack of response. Absolutely, you shouldn't be because they're not supposed to be responding to you. And your responsibility is not to get them to respond, praise God. So weight off of you, that's not your job. You can't do that even if you wanted to. The, Jesus is the one who draws people. So, but at the same time, how believable is it if we're standing up here and we're like, come on, church, let's worship Jesus. And musicians and vocalists are just like, you know, we just don't look like the joy of the Lord is on us. We don't, we're, we're not exuding the fruit of the Spirit. We, we, don't, we don't look like we're having a good time. I mean, that to me is, is such a crucial aspect of, you know, watching the live stream back is, what do I look like? Yes, identity, amen. Um, so it's just, I'm, I always use this example because this was always so funny to me, but we did a song back at the church where we... Uh, uh, worked, oh, the one that we're going to do. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And some of our vocalists and, like, our guitar player, or maybe the bass player, they just looked miserable. I'm like, what kind of testimony, what does that testify to when that's our posture and our body language and our facial expression up on stage, but then we're trying to, this is what we're declaring out of our mouths. Like, is it really in our hearts? Like, do we really believe it? Because if it is, it'll be an outward expression. It'll come out of us. It, it'll be evident. And we want the congregation to see that and sense that. Um, so that's really, really important. Watch yourself. <laughs>
we used to always tell our team, you know, if Jesus is in your heart and you have a relationship with him, can you please let your face know about it? So, um, yeah, you, you can steal it, put it on a T-shirt. Uh, if Jesus is in your heart, please, will you please let your face know about it? Um, yeah, we had, I had a great friend of mine was one of our drummers, and he just always looked angry when he played. So I would just be, Carl, smile. Like, God is good, smile. <laughs> yeah, great guy, like, amazing guy. But just when he played, there was just this, like, stoicness. I was like, you, you look like you want to murder someone. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I know you're in the cage, but we can still see you. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's, you know, those are just some different ways to serve the worship pastor. Use the live stream as a tool. Um, and so the next thing is serving the congregation. Again, I'm going to be pretty quick on these. So as far as the congregation, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Like, we don't want to be a distraction. Um, we don't want to be playing too much, you know, singing too much, like ad lib stuff. And then um, we don't we we just want to um, create an atmosphere that allows people to worship. So how are we doing that? Um, and and uh, yeah, that's 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 really all I have for that. And then moving on to the song. So this is where we get into the fun stuff, and then we'll we'll hop up on stage. Um, so serving the song, the biggest thing is know your role, know your role, know what you what you're supposed to bring. And I always say sim- simple is always better. Um, I would rather simplify everything and get to a place where everyone's gelling and then start adding the flair. Um, we had to do that with our team. We had to be like, let's just simplify everything for a season. Let's just, let's just play the parts. Let's just get through it. And then we can start adding the creative elements. So, oh, hey, let's sit with it. Let's add some hits. Let's do a drum chorus and just a vocal. Like that's, w- you know, just get back to simplifying, getting, you know, uh, knowing what you're supposed to do, and then you can start adding the, the flair, if you will. Um, so I want to get into just some of how we do that, how we serve the song. So we're going to do a listening exercise. We're actually going to listen through House of the Lord. Um, but I want to talk through, real quick, some things. Uh, when Angie sends out a song, let's pretend House of the Lord is a brand new song, and okay, I have to learn this song by next week or two weeks from now. What when you listen to the song, what are you go- what are you listening for? So I want to talk through a couple things, and I'll go instrument specific in a little bit. But overall, the things that we should be listening to is tempo, dynamics, the feel and groove, which is the overall like style, you know, feel of the song. Um, and then when you're listening to the song, listen to your part and how it fits in the song. Is it the main part? Is the I, if electric players, is, is it a lead line that you're supposed to be, like you're starting the song? Is it a keys line that's opening up the song? Are drums in or drums out? Just start listening to the, di- the overall dynamics. Um, and then uh, you know, the other thing you want to do is you want to listen to other people's parts. So you don't, don't just hone into yours, but also listen to the overall song. Okay, I know my lead line now. You know, or House of the Lord, bah, 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 bah. How, is, how are we all working together to make that sound tight? What is everyone doing alongside of what I'm doing on the keys or drums? You know, is the bass line following the kick pattern? There's just a lot that goes into that. So don't just listen to your part. And if you know what everyone else is doing, then you can find those little, you know, measures or so in between different phrases where there's different textures that you can add. You know, maybe it's a little drum fill or maybe it's like an, an extra little guitar line or something on keys that you can add in into these different spots. And you know the song so well that you can do that. So it's, I'm going to just go through some instruments. Uh, so drums, and I'll let you speak to vocals a little bit. So drums, um, obviously drums, and I don't say this because I'm a drummer, but drums really are the most important instrument. Um, and I say that because they are the rhythmic foundation of the team. You know when the drums are in and you know when the drums are not. So with that, because it's a really important role when it comes to worship, like uh, you really have to know, you know what's going on and re- like you have to lead. You have to lead with your instrument. If you start building, the band's gonna build. If you drop out, the band's gonna drop out because it's just, you're the loudest instrument on stage. <laughs> um, there's no other way to put that. So listen to the dynamics. How does the song build? Does, it, does the song initially come in strong, like House of the Lord? After that little intro, the drums come in real strong. Um, how do the dynamics complement the vocals? Listen to that. Um, listen to the feel and kick patterns to bring consistency to the song, so that way the bass player can add the harmonic melodies to your rhythms. Um, so bass players, 
I know I'm kind of flying through this, but I just I want us I want us to have some fun. Um, so bass players, how is your bass putting melody to the rhythmic foundation? So you are there adding melody to what the drummer's doing. Um, and does the bass follow the kick pattern? So there's times where the kick might be doing like in Great Our Yard, you give boom, and the kick boom, boom, boom. Or when we get to the chorus, it's your boom, 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 you're driving it with eighth notes. So what dynamically is the bass doing? Um, and you know, low end versus high end. The nice thing about you know an instrument like that is you can play low, and it'll be like really just in your face through the subs. Or to add some like lighter dynamics, you can be up the octave. So what are the ba what what is the bass player doing? Um, when we get to keys, so keys, so bass and drums work together, and I always say keys and guitar work together because the keys and guitar are like the textures and the the extra higher harmonic stuff that's going on. So keys, what sounds are you using? Is it a piano? Is it a rose? Is it a pad? Is it a synth? Is it both? Um, is the song driven by keys? You know, an, uh, an example would be uh, I Speak Jesus. You know, you come into I Speak Jesus, that keys line is right in there. Um, is, uh, is it, or, and then on the other end, is it guitar driven? So like House of the Lord, like when it comes into that guitar line, you know, the keys is just playing really basic stuff so the guitar lead line can come out. Um, so how are we listening to that? And then with guitar, what sounds are we using? Are we using drive? Are we using delay? Are we using, you know, what a clean tone? What, what tone do I need for the specific areas of the song, verse and chorus and all that? Um, is the song led by guitar? Uh, is there like a main lead line right out the front that the, you, I need to come in strong with? Um, and if so, like lead it, like come in strong, lead it. Um, and then if not, if you're not the main instrument, like I speak Jesus with that keys line, how can you as the lead electric player, or guitar player, add and complement that? Um, acoustic players. Um, acoustic players are, the, you're adding a ton of texture with that. That like higher end strumming pattern, it's almost like, I, it, like with drums, I almost feel like that hi-hat. Like the, the frequency wise, you're adding that like extra texture in the high end of the mix. Um, and then is your, like, sometimes, you know, the acoustic guitar is leading and starting the song. Think of, like, A Glorious Day, like, June, 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 like, you're coming in, or Gratitude by Brandon Lake. You're picking in the beginning, and but you're the lead on that. So come in confidently, come in strong. Um, and then we also don't want to forget about aux instruments. Um, so uh, I always say aux instruments are like a violin, a cello, a saxophone, um, percussion on, like, an electric pad or something, or, like, whatever aux setup you might have. So um, I think with these aux instruments, I think they can be amazingly beautiful in worship. Um, however, there is an extra sensitivity that everyone needs to be aware of if there's an aux instrument. Because a lot of times, like in just a lot of these like, you know, songs that they're pumping out, there's, you're not going to hear a saxophone or the violin is not a main instrument. It's, it's kind of in the background. So if you have that, so I know you play violin. So when you're here, how how are you complementing or adding to it? And how like if if there's like a, a the song How He Loves with that bah, 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 like maybe the violin wants to take that and the guitar player can sit back on that a little bit and let the violin take it. Um, you can get creative to not just do it like the song. You have these extra elements that you can add in. Um, and then with that, communicate. Like, hey, I I, I was listening to, we're doing I Speak Jesus. I can double that lead line with the violin or here. I was thinking that maybe I can add something here and you can all work together to just add another element to it that, you know, some teams don't have. Um, so, yeah, that's really all I have as far as, I know I flew through that, um, but you want to talk through vocals a little bit? Yeah. So when uh, vocalists, when you're listening to the song, so there's two different things that we're listening to. So if you're leading the song, um, obviously you're going to be listening to, you know, um, what the worship leader is doing in the song. There's something that you have to be careful of, though, is a lot of the songs that are being released now are live versions of the song. Um, and so a lot of time what they're capturing is they're capturing the live, spontaneous, spirit-led moments that are happening real time. So not everything that the worship leader is singing needs to be sung. 
You have to be able to discern and separate what is going to work for your congregation, what's not going to be distracting because we don't want to be a distraction. We also don't want to try to create a moment that was for that time and is not for this specific time. Okay, so I know, like, um, I think when What a Beautiful Name came out in the very beginning, and Brooke Fraser has this beautiful voice, and she leads so well, she gets through most of the song, and then one version, I know there's, like, tons of versions of What a Beautiful Name, one version of the song, she begins to ad-lib during that instrumental. That worked for that moment. We don't need, I actually, like on our team when we did that song, I had a, a worship leader that tried to recreate that and it just didn't fit. Not only that, but the electric guitar player and whoever else, I think we had a cello at that time, had worked together to take that instrumental and it detracted away from what they were doing, you know. And music is worship too, okay. We, we know this, but I think it needs to just keep being said um, you worship God with your instrument. And there can be holy moments of just instrumental music. I mean, we experienced that earlier when we sat in prayer and we just allowed instrumental music to just kind of flow through the room. There's that space and that time that God can use that with that. There's no words being sung or spoken that he can speak and he can move. But he also m moves through music because he designed and created music. So... Um, so it's really important. So as worship leaders, when you're listening to the song, just be able to separate and discern what is the main melody that needs to just come out and what is more just the spontaneous stuff that, you know, it's not for us. It doesn't mean you can't add your own spontaneous stuff, but obviously it's called spontaneous for a reason. It's in the moment, spirit-led. And then with that, you have to be able to, I think, real-time discern um, with the Lord and also just with maybe the music director or something, when would be the appropriate time in the song to do something like that? If you feel like you need to speak or pray or say something, where is there a break in the song or a time to do that? Um, you also just have to really listen to um, emphasis in the song. I think that's really important. So something like I Speak Jesus, um, that song is is pretty consistent throughout. And then when she gets to the bridge... She starts, I mean, she really punches in, shout Jesus, and she's just like, boom, she's in there. So it's like, okay, I know, like, this is the climax. This is the, the message of the song. This is the, the message that we really want to get out there. My voice is what's going to, you know, get that out there. We just want to punch that. I like to say punch it. So, um, so I'm listening to what that vocalist is doing, how, you know, the low notes, the high notes, where they're breathing, all of that that, you, you know, you can get so technical with it, and I think that that's okay. And then, obviously, you know, you're worshiping with the song and, and learning the lyrics. If you are a background vocalist, whether you're singing melody or you're singing parts, melody, obviously, you have to work out with the person who's leading the song or the worship leader, hey, where do you want me to come in? Melody is important. Let me just say that. So vocalists who don't sing harmony and you just sing melody, you are valuable and important. Your voice is important. Um, you just have to work out with the worship leader, where do I add this in? But remember that the common person who comes into our church and sits out in the congregation, they don't sing harmony. They're not listening for the harmony in the song. And when they sing the song, they're not singing harmony back to you. They need to hear the melody of the song. So what you are doing is important, okay? And if you are a worship leader, like on the youth team, for example, and you have people that want to join the team, but they're like, oh, I sing, but I can't sing harmony, hey, that's okay. I mean, as long as you love Jesus and have a heart for worship and you're going to worship on the team and you have a good voice, like, yes, come be a part of this. We want melody singers because there's something so beautiful about when you have that kind of like chorus sound that kind of rises up from the worship team and the congregation can latch on to that and they can hear that and then that just encourages them to sing. So work with the worship leader on where to bring that in. If you're singing harmony, it's a little easier to figure out your part when you're listening to a song. You can kind of hear them where they put that in and that's really beautiful. Um, think of it like what Andrew was talking about with like an electric guitar or a keys player the harmony vocalists, they're not singing all the time because they're adding dynamic with their voice and what they do. It really is just this beautiful sound that comes through, and it creates just 
just it just makes dynamic. It's it's awesome. So that's what I would say for vocalist. Awesome. And I w- I was gonna do some listening ex- exercise where we can kind of practice this, but I feel like we just need to get on stage. So and and just spend some time up there. Um, so let's. Uh, I don't know how you want to do that. You know, maybe just. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, let's just, and I, and I can always swap out, too, on drums as well, if needed. Um, cool. So let's, let's take some time to transition.